Welcome to A Little More with Lynn, where we learn a little bit more about our donors, volunteers, and today's staff that support the McLaren Greater Lansing Foundation. Today, I am here with one of our brand new philanthropy officers, Rachel Sampson, and I am very excited to introduce you to her and learn a little bit more about Rachel. So welcome, Rachel, both to the show and to the team. Thanks, Lynn. I'm excited to be here. So I would love it if you could just start by telling us a little bit more about you. Sure. Uh, so Rachel Sampson, I grew up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and came to East Lansing in the fall of 2002 uh, to play golf at Michigan State and fell in love with the city, fell in love with the school, um, spent five years on the golf team here. We ended up winning a, a Big Ten championship in 2007 as a team, and I was the individual champion that year, uh, which forced an interesting decision of career paths of do you stay in golf and do I try to play or do I pursue other things? And um, I ended up getting into nonprofit work at that point, working for the first tee of mid-Michigan here in East Lansing and creating golf programs for kids that offered character building and youth development through the sport of golf. Um, Very so, nice intersection of your interests. Yes. Um, you know, my heart was always in service. I, I was raised by a cardiac nurse and a firefighter and watched them my whole life uh, give their life and their skills to others. And um, uh, nursing was not a very good option of a program to tie to a golf athlete. <laughs> so I think I would have enjoyed actually doing that if I would have given, had the chance to, to study. But I went through psychology instead, knowing that I, I was interested in golf and um, the nonprofit world and the sector of being able to, to affect youth and create programs through that ended up being a really cool way to get into giving back and finding a, a career path in that that opened doors to lots of other things along the way. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, that was kind of the start. And I've been back in, in East Lansing since about 2011. Uh, my husband, Jeremy, and I have four kids between the two of us, and we, um, we love it here. We're firmly rooted and have enjoyed getting to know the community. And, you know, Jeremy has a, a long history here as well, and um, being able to kind of expand our horizons and find new ways to meet people and get involved in different organizations. Um, I've been involved with the McLaren Foundation pretty much since moving back in 2011 in a variety of volunteer capacities. So this has always been a place that's been near and dear to my heart and the opportunity to serve as a philanthropy officer is honestly a dream come true. Wonderful. Well, we are very glad to have you here. Um, you brought up, you graduated from high school in Fort Wayne and fun fact for those watching, Rachel graduated from the same high school as our CEO, Kirk Ray. So you guys, you didn't know each other at that point though, right? You just uh, we did not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're a couple of years apart in school, but um, it's been actually a, a cool little piece of, of history that's turned into great conversations over the past few years that he worked at the hospital um, that is very close to where my parents live now. And when we had moved out there when I was young, uh, it was nothing. It, you know, it was just a bunch of farmland on the north side of Fort Wayne. And that hospital system has really made a huge impact on that area as a whole. And most of the, the development that happened was all within my school district, our, our school district. Um, so when you get to hear him talk about the impact of watching a case study, basically, and something he was so closely involved with happening here. And, and again, to be able to be a part of that, it's pretty special. And a cool little personal tie. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's a small town, so that makes it even more kind of interesting that you guys are both from there. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, you know, the what that did for that town, and and we're already seeing the economic impact of our new healthcare campus here uh, in McLaren Greater Lansing. Um, there's already been a, a real trickle down effect with you know new housing, new hotels. Um, we're having better success uh, recruiting, you know, really highly, highly qualified physicians. So, um, I can't wait to, to look back in five or 10 years and, and look at where we came to, to where we ended up. Cause I know that that's, it's going to be the same thing for us here. And, and it's exciting time. If it's anything like what happened down in Fort Wayne in that area, uh, it, it's a profound impact on so many different levels from families to jobs, to the economic development. And I'm with you. I, I can't, 
wait to see how that plays out and how Lansing evolves with, with the evolution of, of all of that um, as a whole. Yep, absolutely. Um, and, and you and I are both still at the old campus today, but this will probably be the, the last little more with Lynn that we are on the Green Lawn campus because we are slated to move um, over to the new hospital very soon. So that's exciting for us. Also exciting. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you touched on the fact that your mom was a nurse um, and you have a real passion for community and nonprofit, but what specifically kind of drew you to the McLaren Greater Lansing Foundation? I was offered a chance about 11, 10, 11 years ago um, to MC the, the golf outing, which was really my first introduction to, to the foundation as a whole. Um, the people, I mean, ultimately are, are what, that always draws me in any way. Um, I love connecting with people and the, the support that has always existed in my experience with McLaren and the foundation specifically, um, the heart of those people who are at the foundation of all of this, the foundation of the foundation, it's, it's kind of unmatched. Um, so it was a natural attraction for that reason alone that you, I had a chance to meet so many people that cared so deeply and that was, Again, that just was something I always had grown up with and thought was normal um, within our household and the things that my parents would do even outside of, of work. Um, as you get older and you, <laughs> you experience different things, you go different places, I realized that that maybe isn't as normal as I thought it was or would have hoped. And to, to meet the people that I have had a chance to meet through this foundation, um, from the staff to the board members to all the different phases of the development of the foundation over the past 10 years, in my experience, it's just, um, it's special. And to be involved in that and to have a place where, you know, I, I was able to do a few things as a volunteer, but, you know, on staff now to know the ins and outs of what's happening at the hospital, to find ways to connect other people to what we get to do and the impact that that's making is, uh, it's a pretty cool thing. So I think that was a personal, it was an easy buy-in on my end. Like it was something that I was, was kind of itching for and um, really grateful for the opportunity. Great, well, we are happy to have you. You have only been here a few short weeks, but we've already got you jumping in on some projects. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what you're working on right now? Yeah, uh, this has been a little bit of the drinking from a fire hose thing, just as a cool timing piece of the new hospital opening and so many different avenues for involvement with different different service lines that exist and new things that are coming online right now. So, you know, right now, I know we're working on the, the grand opening and river, ribbon cutting for the sacred space that's uh, about to come online probably next month, it sounds like, um, starting to meet some of the people that are involved in that, in that aspect of the hospital and seeing how, how different patients or employees are already using that space. Um, getting to meet a lot of people in the cancer center and having some opportunities to tour through there and hear about the different programs that are offered to patients that can help ease their care while they're here and provide support for them and their families. Um, exploring some opportunities for new things that we can help to develop as well, which is always really exciting when you get to try to put something new in front of someone um, or create a new opportunity. So I'm excited to get to do both of those things. Um, some work with some of the volunteer groups, which is exciting as well. And again, like the passion that you meet from everybody in all of these different areas is pretty spectacular. So um, finding ways that we can help support them from a foundation and the needs that they have. Uh, I've, I've loved getting to know that over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. You um, mentioned the Cancer Center, and I would say one of the, the, the funds that we have here that I feel very passionate about is our Cancer Transportation Fund. Um, we know that sometimes, well, very often, the reason that people miss appointments is because they don't have transportation. And so um, we provide gas cards um, for patients who are struggling financially to get back and forth to those appointments. And um, I guess the reason I feel so, so great about that, not only is it helps the patients immensely and make sure that they're getting the best health outcome possible, but a $25 or $50 gift from someone in the community makes a huge difference when you are providing um, transportation costs. And so um, that's, that's a real passion point for me. And I'm excited that you're going to 
be able to put some of your focus on the cancer center in general and the programming there to really grow um, what I think is a, already a pretty good baseline set of funds um, that we use to support the area. So that's going to be really exciting. Yeah, very exciting. And I see behind you, um, again, another intersection of your, your passions. Um, our golf outing is coming up um, at, in May. <laughs> yes. And um, I'm sure you'll either be golfing or helping in some capacity. As you said, you have been for the last 10 years. Um, but it's got to be a little bit different being a staff person. I'm anticipating that it will be different. Um, it's It's been neat over the past couple of years of now having some experience with these events um, as a board member or participant. I, I feel like it's it's kind of a neat thing to watch the behind the scenes of how the staff puts together these big events and all of the levels of detail that go into all of that and how everyone comes together as a team, which, you know, as a former athlete, um, being on a team is something that just feels kind of at home. So as the golf outing being the first event that I get to participate in as an official staff member, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited. And the facilities are great over there at Hawk Hollow and Eagle Eye. And whether uh, I think in the past, I've, I've stood on a, a tee box and hit shots for people or driven around and, and kind of just uh, said hello and goofed off basically, hit shots for, <laughs> for different <laughs> groups. I mean, <laughs> get people to have fun and connect and understand what they're there for and what the mission is. Um, so yeah, I don't know what my role is quite yet. Um, I figure we'll we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> um, and it'll be a fun day. Hopefully we'll have some good weather. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad to have you on our team. I'm glad to have had you here today. And um, I look forward to all the things that you bring to the McLaren Greater Lansing Foundation. So thank you. Thanks, Lynn. I'm excited. And thank you for watching a little more with Lynn, where we learn a little bit more about our donors, volunteers, and staff members that support the McLaren Greater Lansing Foundation. Thank you.